Well, look, what the Celtics gave up for Holiday, I don't think the Knicks right now uh, could have been justified giving up that much for Drew Holiday based on where they are in the team building process. But what hurt is he goes to Boston, right? And CP, you said it. Milwaukee making a big move earlier in the week, Damian Lillard, and now on paper at least entering training camp, it seems like those two, Milwaukee, Boston, are head and shoulders above everybody else in the East. And, you know, if it was one season, all right, you chalk it up to those teams being better. But if you look at Giannis and Damian Lillard, I think they're going to be together for at least two years. And then with Drew Holiday, anybody trading for him, was going to do so with the idea of extending him. So he's going to be in Boston for what we think was several years in the future. So these teams are strong today, and it seems like they're going to be as strong uh, down the road here. And that, I think, is a little bit troubling if you're the Knicks and you're trying to see this thing through. Yeah, it's tough that uh, two of the top teams in the East just got better, you would think, at least on paper. But I, I agree with you here. I felt like where the Knicks were or, or are at the moment Obviously, Holiday's market was going to be quite competitive. You have to think he's going to be competitive, a guy of his stature. I just felt like it, the, what's the right time for the Knicks to go after a guy like that? In my opinion, they should first try to get that top-tier 1A guy. Then you go and get a Drew Holiday when you feel like he's the final piece to the puzzle. That's what the Milwaukee Bucks did with Drew Holiday just a couple of years ago to win that NBA championship. But... There's some in the fan base that say the organization sitting on the assets. What are we doing? Another team right now in our division has has improved. What do you say to that side of the fan base that's saying, you know, Leon's being a little gun shy here? You know what? You look at Milwaukee and Boston. If, if you think to yourself that, you know, they're going to be there this year, they're going to be there next year and, and maybe even the year after that, then I, I could see how you're upset if you're a Nick fan tonight after the events of the past week. And particularly, I'll add this, like the Giannis and Tedacumpo stuff, I was writing it in June about teams keeping an eye on this situation. He comes out publicly, and we all know what he said, right? He challenged basically Milwaukee to put a championship team around him. So the idea that they trade for Lillard, obviously that lessens the odds of Antetokounmpo leaving. And if he's there for beyond this contract, Lillard's there. It just is tough. It's tough. I could understand why. The Nick fan out there that says, why are we sitting on our hands every time somebody becomes available? I can understand that. The thing is, who's coming up next? And what's the big swing? That's what I always say. You're going to judge this regime, Leon Rose, everybody else, on the big move. What is it? Joel Embiid? I don't know if Daryl Morey would trade Joel Embiid to New York if Embiid right. demanded a trade. Is it Donovan Mitchell? And then what does the roster look like? So, yeah, it's... You judge them on the big swing. I can see why there's frustration, why it hasn't happened already. Although you look at the price tag for Drew Holiday, that is a hefty price yeah. for a player who is, you know, in his early 30s, yeah. mid-30s, it's a tough price to pay. I said after the Lillard trade that Boston was was the right spot for Holiday. Just looking at the NBA as, as an objective person. But were the Knicks, do you know if the Knicks made any offers? How serious were they in terms of going after Holiday? I know that they expressed interest. I know they were interested. I think they talked to Portland. I I didn't get the sense in just asking around today that they were going to go anywhere near what Boston ended up getting him for. And I thought I think that they they felt going into the weekend that they, you know, were in the mix there with the Clippers and Boston and I, I think maybe Miami even with all the stuff that had happened with Portland, I think they were still in there. The Knicks felt they were they were in there, but I don't think they were going to come anywhere near that Boston offer is the sense that I got today. Ian, do you have any idea of what that, that trade would have looked like since the Knicks were in conversation with Portland? Like, was RJ involved quickly? Did, do you have any idea of those parameters? I did not. Yeah, I didn't. On this one, I did not get specifics on, on who was brought up, who Portland would have wanted. Uh, it's a, it was a tricky trade making the math work for the Knicks. If you don't have Barrett or Randall in it, uh, I, I couldn't see them sending Randall out in a deal like this. And it wouldn't make sense to send Barrett out in a deal like this. So you'd have to get a little creative. But I didn't get specifics on the players. Uh, the thing that I had heard, not from the Knicks, but from another team that was kind of poking around, was that the Knicks were, were willing to offer uh, multiple first, two first. I don't know if they were going to go three. Mm -hmm. Um 
but nowhere near the package that landed uh, landed our excuse me landed Holiday in Boston, which, as we all know, was was pretty big. Absolutely, it was steep. And you know, for me, I said on the last show with uh, John Schmelk that we had, I, I was okay with not moving for uh, Drew Holiday just because we have a plethora of guards already. I don't know what that was going to look like if you add Holiday to the rotation, and then. Looking at his playoff numbers, they aren't great. I know what he offers defensively uh, during the playoffs. I know he's a great two-way player during the regular season, but for the Knicks, in my opinion, for a team that struggled offensively, I, I don't know why you would want to add someone of a similar skill set to what we already have on the team when you don't have to move assets for when you already have Grimes or Quickly, who are both good defenders. Um, and I, I just look at it as like what those guys develop. That that was just my opinion on the on the matter. Yeah, I mean, I, I could see the argument both ways. I think. The, the risk, just looking at it objectively, is like if you keep passing up on players who become available, wh- who's to say that the next opportunity is better? Uh, who's to say that that next opportunity, just because you want to land that player, you're going to be able to land them? It's risky, right? It, it's risky to pass up on these deals. And uh, I, I, I am sure that they have a big picture move in mind. But, it, it, you know, if it's Embiid, there's a lot of risk there, ways that it could go sideways. Uh, just, yeah, I, I I wouldn't have just be looking at this thing objectively, looking around the league, if they had spent what Boston spent, a little under what Boston spent and gotten Drew Holiday, I, I could see how it would make sense for them, even though you're going to extend him and he's older. It seemed to me like a move that made, excuse me, made sense in some respects for this team. Well, once again, this is the KFTV training camp tip-off. Salute to everybody in the chat. Once again, hit that like button, hit that share button, subscribe to the channel, CP the Franchise, Alex Retards on the ones and twos. Special guest, Knicks insider Ian Begley of SNY. Our guy Ian is in the building. Training camp starts tomorrow. We're getting you guys ready for it, man. Al, go ahead with your uh, follow-up. Yeah, so Ian, now that Drew Holiday's passed, you talked about Embiid. You see, it, it, you said it would be difficult to see Daryl Morey trade Embiid to a divisional rival. So what is the next move for the Knicks if it's not Embiid or is it Embiid? Yeah, I don't want to sit here and rule it out, right? I just know from conversations over the summer that, that Daryl Morey, like if it if all things were equal, I don't think he's sending him to New York now. Mm-hmm. Could the Knicks put together a, a monster package that he can't refuse? Maybe. Um, is he the guy even kind of signing off on that move if you get to the point in Philly where Joel Embiid wants out who knows but if it is more and if all things are equal i just can't see him sending his top player to new york given the whole, all the circumstances with regards to what's next i mean donovan mitchell we know he's not extending in cleveland so that's certainly something to keep an eye on to where, see where things go in cleveland uh and outside of that immediate name i think you always look at extension eligible rookies right and and who reaches an extension with their team who doesn't the financial situation of that team you know one of the interesting ones for me and i i think minnesota is gonna gonna pay him but uh jalen mcdaniel's up in minnesota mm, yeah they have a lot of money committed to carl towns a lot of money committed to rudy gobert and anthony edwards is going to come in max money and so Nas Reed, they gave Nas Reed money too. They paid Nas Reed. Yeah, so yeah. how much can you really give McDaniels? Is he going to be satisfied with what you can offer him? That's the kind of thing that I would look at if I'm a team that's like has enough to make a big trade. That's the kind of complimentary player that could really help you win games if things don't go well in those extension talks. In terms of Spider, I'm I'm thinking about Miami, right? Like, yep. they just got spurned twice in one week. Yep. Losing yep. two of their top targets, you would think their top targets. I wonder if they pivot over to Cleveland and try to get Spider in there because, you know, you can never count them out. You look at what they did last year. It's a very commendable job. But to do that two years in a row or, or to think that they have something sustainable with a fresh new young core with Jovic and Hawkes and all these guys, I wonder if they pivot to Spider. You know, also, CP, I would not be surprised if they made a strong run at Embiid if it mm. comes to fruition where Embiid becomes available. Uh, I think he and Jimmy Butler uh, have a strong affinity for each other, so I could easily see the Heat being aggressive if you got to that point with Embiid. But, yeah, Miami's always going to be lurking. Um, so, 
the, the, I don't, the thing that I don't understand, just going to go on a little tangent here. As an yeah, aside, yeah, let's do it, man. Uh, like the Nick fan who is like killing Miami for not getting the players that they were going after, killing them for their off season. But Miami is just coming off an incredible run where they beat the Knicks. Yeah. I, I just don't know why you would look down on what the Heat do or don't do in an off season where they're coming off uh, beating you in the plus. That's yeah. just me. All right, that's just me. It just uh, that's one thing I saw today where I, I just I didn't get it. We're, we're we're looking for those small little wins, you know. I, I think Game <laughs> Six really really stung us, man. Really insulted us a little bit. We're looking for those wins. So to see Joe Cronin yeah. go off at that hall that Miami couldn't come close to giving him, and then they lose Drew Holiday. They not only lose Dame, they lose Drew Holiday. It was a little little win for the Knicks fan. They want to take a little win from yeah. him, you know. That's a, fair. A, a, a right. Also. Also, you have the whole, you know, Pat Riley always gets his guy. He didn't get yeah. Kevin Durant, didn't get Spider, didn't get uh, Bradley Bill, didn't get Dame. Now no Drew Holiday. Just, well, you know, as that yeah. guy who's happy that Miami didn't get any of these people. Yeah, I just want to rub it in a little bit. I get it. <laughs> Ian, do you think with, with Brunson here, do you think that's changed the organization's view in terms of a Spider Mitchell pursuit? Like, do you do you think that would kind of take their, their feet off the gas a little bit or – is is he still you know a, a target of this based on what you uh, what you've experienced? Yeah, I think you know, look at what happened right after they after they signed Brunson. They were still heavily in on Mitchell, and I haven't heard anything that leads me to believe that that kind of pairing they would shy away from at all. Uh, so I I would assume that they still feel the same way about Donovan, where they would make an aggressive offer, and yeah, just all the the, the tea leaves and the whispers around things. Um, it seems to me like his, if he's not signing the extension, if Cleveland is shaky, you, that's just something you keep an eye on. I, I, to answer your question, though, no, I, I haven't heard anything that leads me to believe anything else other than they'd be comfortable with Donovan Mitchell, Jalen Brunson, and whoever else ends up on the roster. <laughs>